What's up guys? Four Wheeler Doctor back again. Got my mama over here. Just over there talking. Uh, tonight we're working on a, or today I'm sorry, we're working on a 304 Trax motor. Uh, this is a 97 model. Uh, this is the FW version, the four wheel drive. I'm not really sure if that's what FW stands for, but hey, it sounds good. But anyway, four wheel drive version, that really doesn't matter. The internals of the motor are still the same on the two wheel driver four. So if you're working on a two wheel drive, stick around. I'll show you how to put this thing back together. All right, start off with, uh, well, this is a new, well, not a new, a used crankshaft, crankcase, I'm sorry, uh, because the old one had a stripped oil drain plug. And the owner did everything he possibly could to get it to quit leaking, and it wouldn't stop. So uh, we're going to end up changing the crankcase on it. Probably going to end up honing the cylinder, put some rings in it, and I'm putting a big gear reduction in this thing too. So um, that uh, is really the reason we're tearing this hall down. But we are going to fix the oil leak issue while we're in here. Uh, what we got to do first is get this crankshaft in. This is uh, the crankshaft that came out of the old one, and the balancer shaft. There's little tick marks on here. You need to look all the way around. I know they're going to be too fine for me to show on camera, but there's a tick mark right here on the between two of the gears. And if you look around on all of these teeth here, there's a tick mark on there that you have to line up as well. The tick mark on the crankshaft is about just a tick mark, just a hair over the, um, say, 10 o'clock position. I don't know, it might be the 10 o'clock position. Right up here, about right there. And uh, you line that one up with this other one on the balancer shaft. And these things should go in together and should mesh up to where they don't hit anything as you spin them over. This line is pretty faint on here, so uh, having to make sure I get it on there. All right, just like that. You just line the two teeth up. Put the line in between the two. Slide the crankshaft in there. There's one more uh, line that you can line up on the, um, once you get it all together. Or actually right here. Let me see if I can show that. You can see the tick there and there's also a tick right here on that balancer shaft. So line those two up and that just lets you know that they're that you're pretty close. I'm gonna take and tap this thing in there. Uh, I could do it in the press, but man, it seems like it takes me longer to get that press set up than it does to just to ease this thing in here. Most of the time, these will slide in pretty easy, just tapping on them with a rubber hammer. You wanna make sure both of these shafts get lined up in those bearings, because if it don't get lined up in the bearing, they will not go in there. So, tap it in. About halfway in there make sure it still rotates that one actually you could hear it it just sat sat all the way down in there on the bearing there it is all the way down I did put some oil on that bearing before I put it in and uh, checkered marks there they're still lined up moment of truth does anything hit nope perfect so that's the um, timing up of the crankshaft and the balancer Next thing we need to put in is this thing transmission. This is one of the harder one transmissions of uh, Honda ones to put in because this one you actually have to take all the gears off of a shaft in order to get it apart. So uh, I'm going to stick this this shaft back in there. This is the output shaft, and like I said, this is a four wheel drive mo motor, so it does have a, a front shaft on here. But if it's just you're just dealing with a two-wheel drive, all you'll have is this shaft coming out, but still have this one. So uh, it's got an O-ring on it. Shoot a little oil on that O-ring to let it slide in there and seal up, but it doesn't have any kind of um, sealant or anything like that on it. So just slide it in. May have to tap it too because I remembered when I took it apart that it was a little tough to, to get out. The, there's not a whole lot of tolerance between the um, outside edge of it and the case so just tap that thing in there it does have a dowel on the top there so you got to line that thing up or it won't go in there 
see if I can get it to twist around here just like that tap it a few times and it should slide together I'm gonna spin this thing around uh, go grab the uh, three 12 millimeter headed bolts to go in there and uh, we'll get those tightened up I'll cut the camera back on once I get those tight and right before I put the gears on the other side alright guys now we're gonna stick the uh, transmission back in got three bolts on the front tightened up the I'm gonna try this like this hopefully it's gonna work out I'm gonna stick this shaft in there first it does have a washer on the end of it so make sure you put that in there and it goes in this hole up here at the top like that and then the rest of these gears have to go on this other shaft I did think I had enough to at least zip tie them all together naturally the biggest gear goes on the top I think that's actually first gear and the smaller one goes on the bottom and I'll show you the the pattern that these things go back in there so that hopefully you can replicate this on yours so cut your zip tie off all right put this small gear in there there doesn't appear to be any difference on side to side or which way it goes hopefully this is going to slide right past the the other gears we have in yes work perfect slides in there and you've got another spacer here goes on next then the next gear also has a spacer on the inside slide it over there it's got these little teeth in it that you have to line up on the keyways of the shaft slides down like that then this one goes with the uh, flat side goes in first so it goes down down on the motor I am gonna have to um, slide one of these gears out because I don't think I can get all this in here that one gear didn't clear so that now it will slide it on down I don't think we'll have that problem with any other gears on the set all right, next one that goes in is this gear here with a, it's got a collar on it inside. That's one that your shift forks will go on. And it goes in with the three, three little nipples sticking out. All right, next one to go in is this gear, well, two gears here. They're actually meshed up together with a little color, collar between the two the bigger gear larger gear goes on first you gotta line that up with your uh, slots in your shaft and it'll slide on like that now you've got one more of these cogged pieces with the with the collar in the middle of it slide that over there and the last one actually before I put that one on I'm going to stick this reverse gear on there. Reverse gear has got a washer on the back side and a washer on the front side and a little pin. Make sure that pin goes in that little slot for the hole there at the reverse gear. Go ahead and slide that in there because it will be in the way if you don't do it now. Just like that. Slides all the way down and then that last, last gear goes on naturally last. It's got a collar in the middle. I think I'm going to put the collar on there first because it's not lining up quite right. You have to end up having to line the collar up and the, um, and the teeth of the gear all at the same time. And it gets, gets to be a lot to do. Can't get the little collar to line up here. See if I can pull it out and maybe start over again. use my improvised hammer here aka needle nose pliers tap it down on there I believe I need to get me a socket will probably be your best bet just like that and then our hammer again there it goes slid right on there then alright so then your last gear uh, the flat side of it actually faces out 
So it slides down on there just like that, and then your washer. And that's it for the uh, transmission. It will not turn over right now because it's actually kind of in between gears. Since you don't have the shift forks in there, um, there ain't no telling what gear it's in. So what we're gonna do now is slide the shift forks in. These things have markings on them, R, C, and L for right, center, and left. And this is the left crankcase, so the left fork will go in there first. And just slide it in there. The left fork, the first fork to go in, goes on this shaft down toward the bottom. The center fork that goes in is going to go on this shaft, uh, just a little ways up from the bottom. Hoping I can get it to slide. There it is. And then this one goes on this shaft as well, right out here at the top. So kind of wiggle them things around to get them in there. Uh, do not put this shaft in there yet. We're going to stick the shift drum in there first. Reach in on the back side there and push down on that little arm that's on that that goes on the end of that shift drum and stick this drum in there. The drum goes in with the, um, there's, there's a larger step on one end and a small one on the other. The small step side goes in first. So, uh, Slide this in there. Hopefully your shift forks aren't gonna get hung up on your on your drum as you try to push it in, which I think they are. So you're gonna have to wiggle those around some so they don't get bound up on your drum as you push those in. It actually makes it a little bit easier if that bearing is not not in there. Knock the bearing out just a little bit. I knocked it out a little bit, like all the way out. So, we'll stick this thing in here without the bearing in it to get it halfway lined up on our shift forks. And the way I like to do that, um, the shift forks, to get them to line up, you just stick a screwdriver in there and get the fork in the groove To try to get them all lined up together. Sometimes this is kind of kind of be like surgery. You can't get in there real good to them, and they need to be uh, kind of lined up about in the middle. So you, the, the way they're sitting now, where they're laying all the way down, they're not really going to line up in the in the right groove. So just spin this thing around the shift drum until you get them all lined up. They're pretty close to lined up right there. Push the bearing on up, up on the end. Kind of get the bearing started. Alright, now I'm going to tap this shaft down in there <coughs> in the shift forks. It does do naturally. Most of the time you need a hammer to get that thing to slide down in there. Not just beat it in, but it just got a little bit of resistance to where you can't you can't just push it in with your hand so go all the way down there it is it hits the case it actually needs to go into the case so there you go I kept tapping it went another quarter of an inch or so down into the case now we need to flip this thing around and kind of get the bearing in there for the shift drum the shift drum actually has to come out just a little bit. There it is. It's kind of it's lined up pretty good right there. With the bearing on the end of the drum and everything else is lined up. As far as the shift shaft, the gears, you can see the gears will rotate. I'm not gonna spin them much because the uh, there you go, it's in it's uh it's in some gear there i don't know which one i don't have the shift drum rotated quite like it's supposed to be so what we're going to do now is stick the stick the crankcase the other crankcase half back on here you need to keep keep a check on your um on your shift forks to make sure they stay in your slots because mine just popped out so uh keep an eye on those got everything out of our transmission box here 
So all that's together. Now the next piece we need is going to be the other crankcase half. Shoot, I don't even know where it is right now. Here it is. And we're going to need a bearing, I mean a bearing, a gasket, and I think the dowels are here. we got a dowel here and a dowel here. So let me grab the gasket, clean this up a little bit, get some RTV to, to put it back together with, and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys, we're back on this thing. Got some, uh, I got some RTV on it. I'm going to stick this gasket over here. My helper's leaving now. I don't know where she's going, but uh, anyway. Oh, she's going to listen to me talk. So, uh, we're going to slide this thing over here. This gasket kit's actually made for, uh, I really don't know what it's made for. 300, 400, 300, TRX 300, something or another. I don't know why it's got this other little piece that sticks off the end here, but it does. But all the other bolt holes seem to line up fine, so I don't know what the deal is with that. But anyway... The gasket goes on there like that. There's two dowels, a dowel here and a dowel here. And all the other holes seem to line up pretty well, so we're going to stick it back together. I did put RTV around there as well as RTV on this other half. And we're going to slide this thing on here. Hopefully, everything will slide together like it's supposed to. Get all your shafts lined up, your crankshaft, your transmission shaft there. And then our ship shaft just fell out. So that's not going to work. Let me slide this back off and see if I can get it straightened back up. All right, guys, I got the um, uh, ship shaft back up in there like it's supposed to be. Uh, I think we're going to have to end up sticking your hand back to the back side of it and hold that shift. I'm talking about not the ship shaft, the shift drum. Hold that shift drum up and that bearing to keep it from falling back out like it just did a minute ago on me. So, um, sli start sliding this thing back down in there. I'm gonna hold this shift drum. Lord, somebody's calling me on my work phone. Let me see who that is. Sorry about that, back at it again. Uh, continue to hold this shift drum back here on the back side, the bearing and the shift drum, as you slide this front case over. I'm gonna take and lightly tap this thing with the uh, with the rubber mallet here to get it to slide together. It looked like what happened before is it got, um, that shift drum got a little bit off as it is right there. So you wanna make sure you get it lined up as the pieces start to go together. So tap it on down, so I'm hitting it right there. Move that shift drum out so it lines up. Tap it a little bit more. Still not quite lined up. There it is. So now it should go down on there with a little resistance. And I tap it on both sides there to get it to go down on there kind of square. And everything else looks like it's lining up pretty well. Our dowel's going in there. Got my finger back here on the back of the shift drum. There we go. It's about it's about seated up all the way on there. I'm gonna get a few of the bolts. And uh actually this side here only has that one bolt, so I'm gonna start it in there, not not run it in real tight. And um, then we'll flip over to the other side and run all those bolts in. Guys, I had a slight distraction in the shop, so I did not turn the camera on to tighten this bolt up. My mom was in here talking about like a radio, so it's hard for me to keep my concentration going. But that's what happened here. We, uh, I pried this thing down, uh, this arm down with a screwdriver, 12 millimeter bolt. There's actually a uh, little... A uh, little alignment pin that's on that shift shaft that you have to line up with the notch that's on the back of this star piece here. So I got that tightened up. Um, I think it's like 25 newton meters what it calls for. I just tightened it down tight. So the next thing we need to put in is these little little slivers of metal. I don't really know the proper term for them, but we're going to go with sliver today. 
This is what holds the bearing in. Also got this dowel pin that goes over top of it. So we're going to slide both of those in at the same time, or try to at least, and not drop something. Got that one in there. It's turned sideways, so I'm going to straighten that up with a screwdriver. And the top one, slide that in there as well. Both of those need to be pushed down. So uh, put those on there. Then we've got to put these larger dowels over top of these smaller ones. Just like that and like that. So I got to get that one straightened up. And then I put this piece on there. I think it goes in this direction here. But we have to have this other part on there first. So let me get these this bearing tapped down in there a little bit farther because it's not right. Get that little metal sliver of metal back up there where it holds the bearing and then we'll get ready to put this plate on. Uh, I'll cut the camera back on in a second. Alright guys, next thing we need to put in is this little funny looking arm thing here. It's got these little spring loaded ears on the back side of it that we had held on with uh, zip ties. Make sure you hang on to those things and slide it in here. Kind of pinch around it. Get this shaft out of the way. I don't know what I got in there for. But uh, pinch around it to get this thing to slide in. Like that. And there's also a little collar on the end of here. You want to make sure you put that in there as well. Collar right here on the end of that. Make sure you have that in there. Um, okay, now you need to put the plate back on here. And the plate goes on, goes on this direction and lines up over your dowel holes everything pushed in there like that and then put your two 10 millimeter bolts back in you want to make sure that those dowels go through the plate there when you tighten those up and torque that thing down to our 10 newton meters that we normally run these things down to and then the next thing to stick in will be the shift shaft here slide through this hole it does have a washer on it so make sure you stick the washer in there slide it through and then the end here with the spring on it goes over that little dowel the other end will go over the the little collar there that we just put in make sure that thing's tapped all the way down in there and that should be it this all right so next thing we're going to do is stick the flywheel on the flywheel in this case has a big washer goes on first then this little funny little bearing thing here collar slides on and then your flywheel this does have a keyway in it, so you make sure you line your keyway up with your notch on your flywheel. So slide it on there just like this. Kind of rotate it around so it lines up. And then put your bolt in there. That's a 17 millimeter bolt. Just gonna run that in with the impact, tighten it up. There again, not really sure what the torque spec is on that, but uh, just tighten it down pretty tight. And I may go ahead and see all right, I can, uh, I'm going to get that tightened down and then get the cover cleaned up and get ready to go on the side here and I'll cut the camera back on in a sec. All right guys, before we stick this uh, cover back on, I do have to put the starter gears on there. You need to get this shaft here with the gear on the end. It slides in first. Got a couple other gears to go out here, but uh, I'm going to wait until we get the cover on there to put those on. All right guys, now you can uh, tap this shifter on here just to make sure you got everything lined up. You um, transmission and all that. I know this ain't the position it normally goes in, but I'm just trying to spin it. Uh, you will have to rotate the the shaft that the clutch goes on over here just to get the transmission turning. And just to check this thing out, um, it looks like I had it in neutral, so that's reverse. You can see your uh, output shaft there spinning a little bit. That's neutral, first, second. Oh, kind of got hung between first and second. There we go, second. Third, fourth, and fifth. 
this uh, is not the ideal way of shifting it because it does, as you can see, get hung up just a little bit because uh, with the motor rotating and all that, it, it does help it shift a little better than this. But the biggest thing here is you just want to make sure it's going to go through all the gears and wind up back down in neutral right there. Uh, just helps get everything else lined up for putting it all back together. All right, so transmission's good. Uh, all that shift mechanisms back in there correctly. So now the thing we need to do is uh, get get ready to put this stator cover on. All right, guys, I got a light coat of uh, RTV around both of these uh, mating surfaces. This thing does have a dowel here on the bottom right corner and the top left. Uh, now you want to slide your gasket over there. I, I always like to put the gasket on the side that the dowels are on. Sometimes they get stuck in one cover or another, and I just make sure they're in the same cover. It really helps uh, getting everything lined up. Cause sometimes these gasket can get off, and that dowel will pinch a hole in the gasket. So uh, just slide this thing over. It will be kind of magnetized, so hang on to it because it'll snatch itself down on there. Biggest thing is to get it lined up, kind of centered up over your um, shift shaft there, and just keep wiggling it down. And then once you get down to the point where it starts to hit the dowels, it's not down to that point yet. There it goes. Well, it sucked it all the way up. So there you go. Uh, that's all the way on there now. Stick the uh, bolts in it. All right, guys. Next thing, I uh, got all those torqued down. This one bolt here does have a uh, like a copper washer on it. So make sure you stick that back in there. Uh, now we're going to put the starter gears in here. The first one to go on let me see which way these things go I'm thinking it's going to be this one here it does have a washer on it, it goes on this shaft it's stuck out right there you drop the washer thank goodness it didn't fall down in the motor put the washer on there and then this uh, gear here slides in next with the little dial pin that centers everything up just like that uh, this gasket was still good on this cover, so I just um, put a little RTV on it. Uh, there's two dowels right here to get everything lined up. So just slide this thing over those shafts like that. Tap it down and throw your bolts back in. And then we'll jump around to the other side and start on the gear change stuff over there, clutches, and the gear reduction, which is going to be the next next item we're going to work on. So I'll cut the camera back on and get, get it flipped over to the other side. Alright guys, we're starting over here on this right side. Um, I am going to put replace the cam chain on this bike. We need to put that on first before we do any of this clutch work. Pretty simple. This is a new chain here. Feed, uh, feed it through the top hole and kind of stretch it around so it gets on the crank. And it goes on, there's two sets of gears on there. It goes on the gears that are closest to the inside of the case. And just to make this thing a little easier to hold on to, I normally put a piece of wire on it, twist it up, and it helps, it to, helps you be able to fish it through the, the holes in the head. All right, next thing we're gonna do, let me see, I think I'm gonna um, get the oil pump on. I believe I need to put it on next before I do the clutches. So let me grab the oil pump out of the uh, tote. Cut the camera back on in a sec. All right, guys. Um, we put this oil pump on a minute ago. You actually do need to put your uh, crankshaft gear on first if you're running a factory crankshaft gear. We're putting a gear reduction in this thing, so it will actually slide over top of the oil pump. But um, normally, you need to or you need to install this oil pump after you put this crankshaft gear and the crankshaft gear normally will have a a washer on the back side of it where in this case with this um, 60 percent reduction you don't have that washer so um, we're gonna go ahead and slide this thing on like I say no washer right over top of the crankshaft I mean right over the crankshaft and right over the oil pump just like that all right, guys, we're going to put these um, oil rings in first. That's a dowel. A dowel in first. We've got a dowel in this this hole here that Riker's working on. His head's a little bit in the way of the camera right there. One dowel. And then the other dowel goes in the other bolt hole. 
right here. Right there. And, and then, then you need to put this old or the oval ring. O ring. O ring. Right there. Here. Right here. It snaps in that little groove there. And then you need the oil pump. The oil pump's next. And the gear of the oil pump meshes up with this uh, the other remaining gear on the crankshaft. Just like that. And the little ears for the oil pump goes over those dowels that Riker put in earlier. I think he got them in there. But he knocked that one. Riker, you about to flip the camera over. He knocked the one dowel out. Let me stick it back in there. Didn't have it set in there all the way. So, um, fits right in there like that. Now you put these three bolts in for your oil pump, and your oil pump's in. So, cut the camera back on in a sec. Alright guys, like I said before, we're getting ready to start on this gear reduction on this thing. Um, got to get all the parts in here behind it before we can get the reduction started in. The next thing we're going to put in is this oil tube here. It goes in here like this here. has some different bolts on it. Some uh, banjo bolts and some normal uh, regular 10 millimeter headed bolts. So the banjos go here, and then you got a little short 10 millimeter here on the bracket, and then a longer 10 millimeter here. Also an O-ring on this end, so make sure you uh, don't forget about the O-ring there. So let me get those tightened up, and uh, then we will slide this um, slide. Hold on, this one here ain't going on too good. And I dropped it. We're going to slide this um, little cover, almost like a splash shield that goes below the, or goes in front of the oil pump here and below the clutch. Right here. Bolts in here like this. See if I can find the bolts for it. Clutch guard, here they are. A little short bolt holds it in up here on the front side. And then you've got a longer one there on the back side. That one goes in there like that. The long one goes in here like this. Tighten those up. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to loosen this back up because I don't think that that gear will get on there. So let me let me uh, loosen this up at least until we get the um, the change clutch in there. All right, I'm going to cut the camera back off now because I'm going to do a little bit for this gear reduction. Uh, you really won't have to do this on yours unless you're changing your clutches. But um, I'm gonna, I'll cut the camera back on in just a sec. All right, guys. Next thing we need to do is get the shifter uh, uh, reverse cup pieces put in there there's these little pins that we pulled out when we took this thing apart they need to go back in the the um, shift drum and I believe the way these things go they've got a little tapered section on the end the tapered part goes out and then this little arm looking piece goes on there next and then the last part is the actual cup with a Allen head bolt in it. Need to put some Loctite on that thing before you put it in. So Loctite it up and then put it on here. And I believe these holes are actually offset a little bit so they'll only go on there one way. Pretty sure. Let me check and make absolutely sure on that. Yes, that is correct. So the way it goes on there, if your if your arm looks like this, and this is in neutral, that um, this fatter part will go toward the top. So the holes are a little offset, so uh, it'll only go in there one way. And tighten that down with a was it a 
five millimeter impact or a five millimeter uh, Allen I'm sorry not an impact so run this thing down all right then you want to put your uh, reverse safety arm back in there and it goes in like this and the arm the uh, arm the spring needs to be pried back around so it catches right above the uh, oil screen there and then your other arm is going to touch the little ear on the on your reverse safety switch there and what this thing does is when you try to go in reverse like if you try to go in reverse now it will not let it go you pull the cable this thing rotates down and then it'll allow it to turn that one more time to go into reverse so that's actually how the reverse thing works so that's how it goes back in there is a washer that goes on here uh, I'm gonna have to find that because I don't know where it is right off but uh here it is right here real thin washer goes on here and we'll slide the clutch basket back over so you got to slide that clutch gear back on there at the same same time and then get the splines to line up on your transmission gear here there it goes we're going to tighten up these this splash shield bolt here we need to put the nut and washer back on this washer um, has outside stamped on it make sure that faces out uh, got a got your nut here I think this is a 20 let's see 27 or either 24 one I believe it's 27 yep that's a 27 millimeter nut um, I don't I'm not real sure what the torque spec is on that thing I just torque it down good and tight with the impact and that's always worked for me uh, one good thing about this thing is it is staked in there so that makes it nearly impossible to back off so hit this with the impact and All right, good and tight. Still got some good, uh, I reuse this nut. Sometimes they're not in shape to reuse, but this one here doesn't look too bad. So we're gonna knock that back on there with a, with a stake if I can find a hammer. Just hit the nut down at that little, in the notch just like that. All right, so that's that part's done. Now we get need to get the centrifugal clutch. Let me cut the camera back on in uh, just a second. All right, guys, now we're going to stick this centrifugal clutch on. Uh, it just slides right over this crankshaft. Get it lined up with your gear on the back. Slides right down. Stick the washer on. It's got outside stamped on it. Make sure that faces the outside. And then uh, tighten the nut up on this thing. Pretty sure these are reverse thread. Yes, they are. So uh, I'll have to go to the left to tighten this one up. Just run it down until it stops spinning right there. And then grab you a, uh, a little punch. Stake that nut back down in there. So that it doesn't back back out. All right, let's see if I can twist this thing up a little bit. Cause ain't no telling what y'all can see. I actually, you can see pretty good. All right, so that's in there good. Everything seems to be working fine. All right, guys, now we're gonna try to stick this uh, kickstart back in here. Uh, I do have the actual kickstarter still on here. That really helps to get it lined back up. What you got to do is there's a washer on here. You've got to make sure this washer don't fall down in the motor. One thing. You also have to catch this 
spring here, the end of that spring on a little tab up here. Once you get it shoved all in there, almost all the way in there, you have to catch this little tab under this little arm here uh, right beside the change clutch. So there's only about 10 things you got to get lined up all at one time. And I'm going to see if I can do it. Actually, I think it slid in there pretty well. Let's pull it out just a little bit. I like, like to leave the end of that shaft in there on that uh, hole so it kind of pivots on it. And then just slide it all in there like that. Just like that. Make sure it's pushed all the way in. That's all it takes. It does have a washer that I just dropped. Pretty decent sized washer on that kickstart. So make sure you get that back on there. And then the next thing we're going to do is put the change clutch back together. There's some more parts that need to go on there start off with we're gonna put this little arm on here there's actually a little dent knocked in it and then there's an arrow cast into the case right here you need to make sure that the, that the dent and the arrow line up I can't even see the dent that looks pretty dang close there so it should be pretty close uh, to where it's about dead center of that of that um, change clutch and it is so next thing we need to do is put the little bearing and the bearing holder inside of the change clutch just bearing and bearing holder not they're not seated all the way together there they are should be about flush stick that in there make sure it goes all the way down it'll sit flush Next thing to go in is going to be this little arm here. The, the end there that sticks off goes inside of that bearing that you just stuck in. Goes down on that, kind of rests on the arm that we put in. And then the last thing is going to be this piece with the three balls on it and a spring. The spring goes toward the inside. It kind of helps to hold everything on there like that right there. And the last, very last thing we're going to stick on is going to be this washer. It, this, um, that shaft there does have a washer on the end of it. So that should be it. Everything's on there. Make sure you got your O-ring here. Uh, you got a dowel here and a dowel here. Get you a gasket. I'm going to put some RTV around this thing with the new gasket and get the cover cleaned out which is pretty well clean over here and then we'll stick this thing back together so let me get everything cleaned up good and uh, I'll cut the camera back on right before I stick it all together alright guys so I got a light cut RTV around this thing and the new gasket on there also put some RTV on the cover and like I said before you got a dial pin here a dial pin here make sure your o-ring is on this piece here your washer is here and then the thing with the three balls on it goes in there too as well as the washer I mean uh, yeah washer on the reverse shaft there and then just slide this thing over it hopefully it's, it slides right over if you get all the shaft lined up it it will fit on there pretty good so ease it down on there don't want to mess up your seal here or your seal on the on the reverse gear so just tap it on hit the back a little bit hit the front a little bit I may stick some bolts in this thing because that gasket is not lining up exactly 100% perfect so I'm gonna stick some bolts in it just to uh, make sure I got my gasket lined up because done this before and the gasket will actually slide over to where it blocks the bolt hole off you don't want that to happen so I'm gonna ease these bolts in here tap it a couple more times with the hammer and then uh, I'll be able to tighten this up I'll uh, cut the camera back on on the next step alright guys we got the uh, motor slid around here now got the base gasket put on here 
don't want to put any kind of RTV or anything on it because it will squish out. I've had problems with them leaking in the past. Uh, we ended up just honing the cylinder on this thing and put a set of rings in it because it wasn't uh, smoking when I took it apart. So we're just kind of freshening it up. Uh, first thing we're going to do here with the piston, piston's already in the um, on the rod uh, with the intake, the IN on it stamped here goes toward the back of the engine toward the intake where the carburetor is uh, so first first ring we need to put in is this oil ring the kind of accordion looking ring it goes in that bottom groove of the piston uh, next ring that goes in is one of these thin there's two of them in the set one of the thin rings goes over top and the bottom of that oil ring the oil ring gap is here at the 12 o'clock position so I'm going to put this next ring uh, it doesn't really matter whether you go on top or below that oil ring, but uh, I'm going to put it, let's see if I can get it to slide down over here. We'll put it over top of that, um, they call that the oil scraper, and the gap for it is here. That's about, I don't know, 5 o'clock. And then the next one's going to go on the bottom of that oil scraper. over here about about seven o'clock right here and then the last two rings are these two the one with the light gray around the edge of it that's going to be your top ring and the other one which is all black is going to be the middle ring they both have something stamped on them both have a t in this case uh, you just make sure those words face upward i'm going to put the middle ring in next and the gap for it again is at the 12 o'clock position just barely um, stretch these things over the piston because they can break if you really really uh, pry on them much and then the last one to go in is this top ring and the gap for it's going at the six o'clock position just like that all right now we're ready to slide the cylinder over top this thing does have two dowels here on the, that's the right side actually, as you're sitting on the bike. Put a few dabs of oil in the cylinder here. Slide it over. We've got our cam chain still attached with a, a wire to help hold it up. You want to make sure that cam chain stays on that gear in there. Uh, and my uh, wire just came loose but uh, make sure that cam chain stays on that gear on the crank because it's pretty tough to get back on there if you um, once you get the cylinder and start to put the head on there so uh, make sure it's slid over enough to get on that gear and it is hold up on it feed it through your hole here in your cylinder Slide it down over your studs. It's actually kind of held up on the um, on the cam chain guide. Grab a, a screwdriver real quick. I usually just take a couple small screwdrivers, flat screwdrivers, and uh, press in on those piston rings as you feed it up through the cylinder. And these cylinders are actually tapered a little bit, so it actually helps you get the rings to slide up in it get this cam chain guide in here put that there all right so get your piston started in there if you kind of rock the piston just a little bit one way I like to try to stick the end of the rings with the gap in it first and kind of tap on your cylinder to get it to slide down this ring kicked out the back. So there we go. The top ring's in there now. Keep on bumping it down with your hand. Big thing is just to make sure this thing goes on here square. There we go. Now the middle ring's in there. Pulling just a little bit crooked. See if I can straighten this piston up and not snatch it all the way out of there. Alright. Keep bumping it down with your hand. 
just about got it all the way on there now let me check the other side just to make sure yep it's in there good keep bumping it down make sure your cam chain guide's not binding up on anything keep bumping it down like that got to kind of hold up on this piston because it's hit top dead center but it'll still try to fall down into your crankcase just like that keep pulling up on your uh, cam chain too keep tension on it and press it on down I'm gonna have to rotate this around because it did fall down but uh, it's all the way down on the on the base gasket now I'm gonna go ahead and stick these two uh, I think they're eight millimeter headed bolts yes eight millimeter headed bolts on the uh, on the base of the cylinder I'll rotate this thing back up to top dead center and also we need to stick in this cam chain guide this will be your rear one it's got a little notch that it falls down into down in the bottom not too hard to get that lined up the top part just to know you got it in the right hole a little bit of dirt on there make know you got it in the right hole your uh, little pin on the top will slide right slide right in you also got to make sure your cam chains on that sprocket like I mentioned before because the cam chain guy will not go in there if your chain is not on your sprocket. And mine's not on my sprocket. It rotated around with the uh, with the piston and now it's not on there. So let me grab a uh, Allen head. You can rotate this thing around with these Allen heads in this uh, adjuster screw hole over here. It's a eight millimeter Allen head. There we go, back to the top. And see if I can wiggle this chain around. There it is right there. Got it lined up on the guide. I'm mean, not on the guide, on the uh, sprocket. Slide your guide down in there so it goes in. There's a little cast piece into the block that it needs to slide into. And like I said before, to be able to tell that it's all the way in, the little ears should slide right down into that notch there. And then your chain, I don't know if you can see this or not but the chain is on the sprocket down in there so we should be good there alright I'm going to get these bolts tightened up and we'll get ready to put the head on alright guys next thing we're going to do is uh, change the valve seals in these valves and lap the valves uh, part I use for this is a valve spring compressor this is actually for an automotive application but it works great for this uh, I think you can actually rent these things maybe from advanced and auto zone and all that I think or if you have a buddy that might have some that works on a lot of automotive stuff uh, he might be able to let you borrow just to do these but uh, this thing pushes on the bottom of the valve here and it's got a little fork part that goes over top of the valve just press down on it until it relieves the pressure on these little retainers up top up here these little uh, triangle shaped retainers I've got a um, set of needle nose pliers here you can pull them out with the pliers these pliers I got are actually a little magnetized so that makes it even easier to get them out a magnet would also work great so relieve, relieve your pressure on your spring right there set your uh, valve compressor to the side and then those are the two little retainers little wedge shaped pieces pull your springs off you got a cap a big spring and a small spring I usually just flip those over so they stay together then just push your valve out like that that's the intake valve we'll take the wire brush and go around this and knock this carbon off I'll cut the camera back on right before I lap it alright I got the valve cleaned up a little bit just hit it with the wire brush now we're gonna lap these things I'm gonna flip the head upside down I've got some valve grinding compound this is this is some permatech stuff you can see i'm about out of it so uh just 
it's just kind of like kind of like some gritty toothpaste just take that and uh, dab it around the uh, sealing surface of your valve and like that and what I do is stick it back in there make sure it doesn't hit the table when you go in and I've got this little tool here a little suction cup wooden handle on it it kind of suctions down onto the valve like that and then you just work it like a like you're trying to start a fire some people will take a drill and and attach it to the stem of the valve and do the same thing with it I just like I just like using this because it, it works good and I don't know that's just what I like to do every once in a while pull up on your valve and that gets your some of that grind, grinding compound sucked down into your seat seating surface all right so uh pull that off after you've done it for a little bit there's no set amount of time to do it just till you till it feels right to you i guess wipe this grinding compound off and then look at your valve the valve should have a, a light gray stripe all the way around it shouldn't it be fatter or skinnier in any places if it is you might have a warped valve this one looks good and a, a little gray area on the seat there looks good as well now we're going to take a screwdriver and pop this old valve seal off just pry up on it it's a rubber valve seal in this case with a little spring around the end of it and then grab a new one part number shoot I can't even see it one two two zero nine KL four zero zero five uh, and it just presses down on there with your finger you can kind of rock it on there to the side that little springs what holds it on so got that in grab your valve stick it back through your hole here like that take your valve spring put it back on there your valve compressor put it back on there like that press down on it and then your little retainers they have a, a real skinny portion and a fatter portion the skinny portion goes in first kind of acts like a wedge to hold this valve on there so you make sure you put those side by side with the skinny portion down first let up on your pressure and then that's pretty much it I do like to take a hammer just to make sure those uh, retainers are in there good take and tap the end of them and that's it i'm going to do the uh, intake valve and then we'll get ready to stick this head back on all right guys now we're going to stick the cylinder head on this thing the i am reusing the head gasket in this case and i put some copper seal on it just to make sure it seals up good clean both of the surfaces with scotch bright so there's our gasket feed this cam chain back up through here gasket will go on there the other direction and I don't think well I know the dowel pins won't line up so make sure you got it going on there in the right direction alright next thing you just want to do is set the cylinder head back on top there again feed your cam chain wire up through here just like that get it started on your studs and make sure your cam chain guides are out of the way because they will get pinched up under there from time to time I'm gonna get this thing pushed all the way down on here there are two dowels I don't know if I mentioned that or not um, on this on this head you got a dowel here and a dowel here they cross from one another so uh, get that all the way down on there before I even attempt to tighten this thing up I'm gonna look down in there and make sure the look down in there and make sure the cam chain is still on that gear and it is so 
just keep tension on that on that chain I mean on that wire there and now we're going to stick the bolts in it and the acorn nuts so if you've got some allen head bolts they are I think uh, 8 millimeter allen heads that go in not sure which one goes where so you're going to have to bear with me while I figure this out Looks like that one goes there that one goes in here looks like I might be missing one so the acorn nuts they have a washer too so make sure you get your washer the shinier looking acorns go on the inside and the duller looking ones actually go on the outside when they've gotten dirty so get those started in there the like I said the allen heads are they are an 8 millimeter these bolts here are 14 millimeter and the torque specs on these things allen heads need to be torqued to 25 newton meters or 18 foot pounds the acorn bolts need to go to 40 newton meters or 29 foot pounds so I'm missing a bolt and a and a washer so let me see if I can look through the tote and find those and then I'll torque these down the main thing on torquing these uh, naturally you'd want to torque down the higher torque bolts first so the 40s first then torque down the smaller ones and then I would go back and check the 40s just to make sure I also want to hit these 8 millimeter bolts on the side here again uh, just to make sure they're tight because once everything all this stuff gets pulled down it can make those become loose again so let me get all this stuff tightened up and I'll cut the camera back on right before I stick the cam in one other thing on these tighten these bolts up uh, you want to do it in a couple steps two or three steps you said these acorn bolts call for uh, 29 foot pounds so I'd probably go uh, you know 10 20 29 and then uh, same thing on the um, the Allen head bolts that call for 18 foot pounds I might go 10 15 and 18 or something like that just so they you kind of step them down so just make sure you uh, do a crisscross pattern and um, torque them down in a couple different different torque settings all right guys now it's time to install the cam we're gonna go over here to your timing hole make sure that you're at the T mark I'll if you're not there rotate it around with eight millimeter until you get to the T mark there keep tension up on your chain here if you do have to rotate it around because that chain will bind up in there but uh, I'll stick a picture of the T mark here all right guys I'm gonna see if I can show you these tick marks on this flywheel these things are so faint that you can barely see them but maybe you can make this out there you go you can kind of see those two tick marks you spin on around a little bit more you get the one that has a tick mark and an F right here and then a little bit more has a tick mark and a T that's the mark you need to line up through your timing hole when you get ready to set this thing at top dead center hopefully this works so there you go there's the T mark uh, so make sure you get that lined up now the next thing you want to do is put your cam in the cam on these things they have a uh, the sprocket will actually come off of them but in order to get it at top dead center both of your lobes or your cam need to be facing down so go ahead and loosen up your tension on your chain here probably gonna go ahead and take it off of this off of this uh, wire so we get that off and then the other thing you want to do is get your gear your chain gear has these two tick marks on each side and there's also a little dimple knocked in the top of it and that should be facing up or the 12 o'clock position about the easiest way to do this you got to feed it all in there about one at the same time so stick your cam through the hole of your of your um, sprocket there let it fall down in there doesn't really matter the orientation of the cam right now but the biggest thing is to get your chain on your sprocket kind of like that there and get it fairly close to being at top dead center I'll see if I can show this on the camera here zoom in a little 
And what you're wanting to do is look for your little dimple, which is right there at the top above that bolt hole. And this line, and there's another line down behind there. I've got it off just a little bit. So you want to rotate it around until both of those lines line up with the top of your cylinder head. See the lines there? And then you dimples at the top. That should be, your chain should be at top dead center there, chain in your sprocket. And now, in order to get your cam there, make sure both of your lobes from your cam are facing down. You can see the one lobe there and the other lobe here. Both of those are facing down and our bolt holes lined up. So what we're gonna have to do, this thing's got two bolts in it. You're gonna have to put this one bolt in, rotate this thing around, get the other bolt in, and then it's always good to check it after that to make sure you're still at top dead center. Uh, it's looking like they're, they're dead on, those two marks and that one. If you get off a tooth, um, I might just show you for educational purposes here, just to show you how far off it is. If you get off a tooth, like there's no there's no close to it you see this mark is a eighth of an inch above it and you can't even see this one so that's off a tooth so to get it back on the right tooth you just move one tooth back just like that right there there you go both your lines are lined up and your bolt holes at the top you do want to put some loctite on these uh, 10 millimeter headed bolts for your cam and they actually have a torque spec on them too that's a little bit tighter than what we normally do because these are the actual shank on these bolts that are a little bit bigger these call for 14 newton meters or i'm sorry 20 newton meters or 14 foot pounds so that's what we're going to torque those down to the i'm going to see if i can ease this thing in with the with the impact and then we'll rotate it around Rotate it around, then we'll worry about torquing them down. Um, let me find the other one. And just stick your Allen head in this uh, in the inspection hole back here. Rotate it around to get up to you. It's a little bit tough. I do have the spark plug in there, so it's, it's putting up a little bit of a little bit of a fight because there is some compression. So there you go. There's your other hole. So get your other other uh, bolt wherever in the world I put it right here put a little Loctite on it I am using red Loctite it probably recommends blue or red I guess but I'm under an impression that I don't want these things to come back out so we're going with red all right got that one in there go ahead and tighten it down all right and then I may Go ahead and hit this with a torque wrench. If I've got the torque wrench here close by, keep y'all from having to wait any longer. All right, so there's our torque. Let's go 14 foot pounds right there, 10 millimeter. And you can hold this thing with your Allen head in your, in your uh, adjuster hole over here to keep it from rotating there you go that one's torqued rotate it on around takes a minute to the next bolt go ahead and hold it there we go that one's torqued to 14 then rotate it on around until you get the dimple at the top and both of these lines lined up and that'll be at your top dead center mark. We'll look in the hole back here and make sure we're at the T mark. That way when we put the, uh, the head back on here or the rocker arm cover back on here, we can uh, go ahead and adjust the valves on it. All right, dead on right there. So now, this thing doesn't have a gasket on the top. So we're gonna put some RTV around here and also put some RTV in this plug hole here and set the rocker arms on. Let me get all that ready and I'll cut the camera back on right before I stick it on there. All right guys, I got a good coat of RTV on here. Uh, just gonna slide this thing back on there. Pull up on your rocker arms as you slide them down. 
and this thing does have two pins I'm sorry you got one here on this corner and one over here on this corner dial pins make sure they're in there as well they are in this case knock it down on there and put your bolts back in this one was actually missing a few bolts so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of investigative work to figure out which bolts go where and how long they need to be but I just so happens I have a few spares here in the shop so stick all those bolts all those bolts in uh, torque them down 10 newton meters and nope, we're gonna need one of those because that one's broke off so uh, let me uh, get all these torqued down and then we will I'll cut the camera back on to install the cam chain tensioner and the starter and adjust the valves and that's going to be about all we're going to have left on this little thing so cut the camera back on in just a second alright guys next thing we're going to stick in here is the uh, tensioner this tensioner is spring loaded you take this 8 millimeter bolt out of the end it does have a washer on it too and you can take a screwdriver and turn this thing or tighten this down and it'll retract the plunger there and most of the time you can just kind of twist it hard right there at the end and it, it'll lock it up to where the plunger stays retracted I'm going to put a little RTV around this gasket or gasket uh, surface here make sure it seals up this thing does have a little bit of a offset in the bolt holes uh, it's kind of a fatter fatter side on the top so make sure it goes in like that with the, with the more rounded off side toward the top just slide it in there like that put your two eight millimeter headed bolts in there Some, uh, socket run those things in you don't want to tighten this thing up if that thing happens if that plunger happens to extend out because it'll stretch your chain and can possibly break it it puts a lot of pressure on it so uh, just tighten those down snug you can hit them with the eight millimeter but that'll be good enough stick your screwdriver back in here and turn it the opposite way loosen it and it springs back out you can see it there uh, so then you just stick your 8 millimeter bolt back in there, 8 millimeter headed bolt to uh, seal that up and tighten that down. That's pretty much it on that. Next thing we need to stick in is our starter. I'm not 100% sure this starter is going to fit in here with the gears in it because sometimes you have to leave them gears out in order to give it enough room to slide by. That might be the case here. I believe so. I think I'm going to have to take this side cover off to get the starter to slide down in there. I should have thought about that earlier, but I didn't. Alright, one more remaining thing we need to stick on here is this outer oil tube. goes on like this. There's a couple banjo bolts, some washers, and the normal one, one normal bolt that holds the, everything together. This uh, one banjo bolt with the funny looking little bracket on it, it goes on the top. So you put this on here like this, put you a, one of those copper washers on the back side, and just get it started in your bolt hole. Then you need two banjo bolts, or two copper washers on this bottom banjo bolt. Stick one on the top, one on the bottom. Put that in there loosely. And go ahead and stick your bolt in there for your bracket just like that go ahead and tighten everything up this bracket across the top here goes around this notch in the head so go ahead and tighten those down and I'll flip this thing around and take that side cover off show you how to install that starter I didn't do it right the first time so let me flip it around and I'll cut the camera right back on all right guys here we are back over here on this side take these eight millimeter headed bolt that you just put in there a little bit ago back off I might try to uh, move this video on up 
clip on up in the video so we won't do this. You won't have to do this. So slide your starter in there. I'll slide this all the way out. So slide your starter in. It goes in just like that. Slide it on out toward the outside of the bike. Your gear here that touches your flywheel. Slide it in your in your case, in the notch in the case with the washer. This gear here goes on that shaft, lines up with this gear and the starter gear, just like that. And then put your cover on and your starter's done other than the two bolts that hold the starter down. So that's how you get your starter in this thing. All right guys, the last thing we're gonna do to this thing before we put it back on the bike is to adjust the valves. The valves in this case are, like most Hondas, are six thousandths of an inch or 0.15 millimeters. So we're going to just do this exhaust valve here and uh, hopefully you can figure out how to do the other one from this. So i uh, got a six thousandths feeler gauge here. Got a little bit of play in it. What you want to do is break that adjuster nut 10 millimeter adjuster nut down this one here has a decompression lever on it that helps you crank it so uh, it's kind of in the way for for your wrench to get in there so you have to use the open end so just turn that center uh, flathead screw that's actually the adjuster for the valve turn that until you get a little resistance on your feeler gauge then tighten it down you want it to where you can slide it through there and you get a little drag on it but not to where you've really got to force it real hard and that's pretty much it the back one is tight so let me loosen it up just a little bit and again you I probably should have done this before but I'm absolutely sure on my um, on my timing mark but this is still at top dead center because I haven't turned the motor over since I uh, checked it last but it wouldn't be a bad idea to check your top dead center all right there you go that's all it takes slide the filler gauge in there do you get a little resistance and that's it so let me stick these valve covers on and then we're going to get the bike back over here put the put this thing on the motor I mean put this thing on the bike and I'll probably have a video of a first startup because I so it seems like a lot of people want to see those I guess to prove that I can put a motor together so I will show you that but uh get the valve covers on we done uh, next time you see this motor it'll be in the bike all right guys finally got this 300 finished up the gear reduction uh, motor rebuild I guess you'd call it we changed the case out I uh, just wanted to show you firing it up just switched it on and see what it'll do I had to give it a little gas Runs like a top alright guys so check out my other videos hit the like button subscribe have a good night